All right. So now we're going to have Matt and Holly, and I'm just going to fall down. Oh, my God. Am I going to die? Am I going to fall oh. on them? No, actually, <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, so here are Matt and Holly. They're very, oh, my God. They're very, they're very active <laughs> as well. Um, so we have Matt and Holly, and we're very excited about that. And why don't we, why don't we walk over here to this Louvre-like area, Matt and Holly, um, and you guys can, can sort of say hello to the Virtual Beings Summit. How, uh, how are you both doing? Uh, we're great. I love this virtual body that I'm uh, controlling right now. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, it's, you know, one day we'll, we'll be able to, to make it look Holly Plus-esque and we can have some virtual concerts and all of that. But um, yeah, I think, I think a lot of people will know about, uh, about Holly Plus, but maybe give a sense of how you, how you kind of think about creating a, a second self uh, or many selves, because I think a lot of people can can try out creating different music with your synthetic um, Holly. Um, but yeah, so tell tell us a little bit about how you think about it. Sure, I'll try to be succinct, although it's a little bit difficult for me. Um, this project started, I would say, over five years hold on, ago. Hold on, hold on. Is Matt trapped? Is this you, Matt? Yeah, I'm trapped in. I'm tra I'm in tuned in it. In this a, is so we actually have the architect <laughs> of this. We have the architect of this thing, and the level of, of teasing that is required on uh, our great friend the voxel architects for literally trapping me. Every this is more like a death trap than it is anything else. So I think Holly, why don't we come back here? You should you should X out. You should just leave. There's no way out now unless. Unless, no. just, I mean, it's it's pretty sad and extremely disturbing watching what's happening. <laughs> okay, you, okay, good. So he's gonna come back. Wait, is this you? No, that's not you. No, it's not. I'm still trapped. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, yeah, just X gonna... out completely and like come back to the central location. Um, <laughs> so um, I apologize. I just felt so bad for him, Holly. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I also thought like this is a little disturbing and it might be. That was amazing. It just is... for our like for our community. So I wanted. To, I was worried about that. Too disturbing. Yeah, it's just felt like... it's a very <laughs> this is, this is me. I'm following you. Okay, okay. I just walked through you. Okay, we're here. Okay, so we're all together now. <laughs> so. Yes, we were we were chatting about Holly yeah, Plus. Stop and how running we around I'm sorry everywhere. to interrupt you, but I thought it was important. <laughs> um, so Matt and I have been working on uh, machine learning um, systems for about five or six years now. And we started out, the first kind of virtual being that we created was actually, we called her Spawn and we called her our child. And essentially we're, uh, we're visual artists and musicians based in Berlin. And so we have a, a vocal ensemble in Berlin and we were training our AI baby Spawn on the uh, on the voices of our ensemble, and so Spawn became a kind of virtual ensemble member that would then uh, perform music on our albums and uh, go on tour with us. So that was kind of our first um, foray into creating a virtual being. And then more recently, we created Holly Plus as my kind of digital twin as we kind of progressed through uh, our capability of uh, vocal modeling, um, machine learning vocal modeling became so much um, more kind of powerful. Um, we, we decided we wanted to experiment on, on someone that already exists and who better than myself. So that's where we came up with Holly Plus. It's amazing, like the great scientists who kind of inject themselves with the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Spawn, Spawn actually grew up to be a verb. Um, that's the ah, right, right. The other side to it. So spawn initially was our AI baby, and then we then started using the term spawning rather than sampling. Interesting. Um, I like that. Try and, yeah, I think it, I think it's really sticky, and it and it is actually kind of what's happening, particularly with a lot of the voice generation stuff, right? Like the idea being that um, you know sampling people are used to this idea of kind of an imperfect replication of a sound where you can kind of pitch it a little bit um but spawning is an entirely different process in which you have you know a corpus of training data that allows for you to spawn child uh content or a child kind of material from that training set and so yeah so spawn the baby turned into a verb and then holly decided to decentralize herself <laughs> well, I'm very curious. Let's, let's go on a little. Let's go on a little journey as we're uh, as we're talking. Okay. So press yeah. F to fly and then jump up. 
Okay, great. It's okay. just, you know, it adds a little bit of a thrill to, uh, right. to the Where did you go? Did you lose your face? Oh, no, there it is. There we go. There we go. Okay, so just imagine that we're like superheroes, just kind of, you know, we're just chatting about a mundane, you know, existence as superheroes uh, and the projects that we're working on. So um, I, I think the decentralizing the self part is super interesting. How, how do are you guys familiar with Meow Wolf? I'm sure you, I'm sure you've, you've sure. Heard. Yeah. So like, how do you think about a community creating high quality work or like, how do you think about quality? with holly dow and like are people voting on what you know if somebody's making a song with holly plus and the synthetic um holly uh is that voted on about whether it should appear somewhere or how do you kind of not quality control but like create a coherent voice for the dow is that the right way of thinking about it how do you how do you think about it sure i mean this is all something that's still you can you can move forward and backwards whilst you fly okay <laughs> <laughs> this is all something that uh, I, I kind of can't move while I talk at the same time. I feel like I don't have enough. Uh... It, does take, it does take a little bit of time to get used to it. This is kind of a, a um, slight, a slight yeah. picture on our speakers, but yeah, go, go on. Yeah, the kind of mechanics of the DAO are still in process, and it's something that we are are, are defining with the DAO itself. You know, mm -hmm. we will have access to that very soon, and we want we don't want that to be something that we kind of top down. Um, decide yeah. alone, but really yeah. what kind of brought us to this conclusion is, you know, I, I did my um, doctoral research on kind of the implicate, the IP implications of machine learning and voice modeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So asking questions like, you know, what is uh, vocal sovereignty if kind of anyone can model your voice and then and then use it as they wish and i started thinking about where how the voice comes about you know the voice is really in a way a kind of communal instrument we learn how to speak by mimicking other people mm -hmm. through language so it's kind of something that's a voice is formed by a community but performed by an individual so it felt like really the perfect kind of mm -hmm. um test case to um to kind of work out some of these issues of um communal creation and communal ownership yeah i love that i love that um what do you i mean when when you start to think about the visuals uh i don't know if you saw the the fox avatar singing competition and like the creation of virtual characters and holly plus feels like a virtual character beyond just beyond just being your synthetic voice it's kind of maybe takes on a bit of a new persona like how, how do you think about that yeah i think holly plus is, is a little bit unique in that it is tied to me as a person you know all of the mm. training data is from me personally so there is a very there's always a connection with someone's you know avatar mm. even if it's not kind of based on their kind of physical appearance or, or modeled on them but this feels like it's an even kind of closer connection so it's something that i'm kind of working through emotionally in real time <laughs> Yeah. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things we've been, yeah, carry on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, one of the things we've been toying with is the idea that, you know, obviously the vocal uh, stuff that has come some way now to the point whereby it is incredibly uh, uh, realistic, both for speaking and singing, mm -hmm. because the vocal information is so tethered to Holly's existence. That in actuality, one of the great opportunities is to allow for the visual representation to be multiplicitous. Um, so one of the things we're experimenting with at the moment is rather than seeing um, the character of Holly Plus as kind of a fixed uh, visual presence, instead inviting others to, to imagine what they want Holly Plus to look like at different periods of time. Um, yeah, so because... So decentralizing because, the visual as well. Exactly. And of course, like that also gives latitude for people to um, contribute. You know, the DAO, we haven't taken the approach of kind of like let it op opening the floodgates initially for the DAO. And so we've been trying to think of fun ways for people to participate with the character and um, and basically earn their way into the DAO by demonstrating interest. You know, and one way you could demonstrate interest is by being inspired by the concept and thinking of different different ways to represent holly plus um mm -hmm. yeah so so that's one thing that we've been we've been toying with um we've been toying with experimenting with because it just feels like it's kind of a cool opportunity right like as opposed to holly's physical body where you know she very much kind of has to look like what she looks like 
which is great, by the way. I love how Holly looks. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a it's a it's an opportunity there to you know to allow for the the term we've been using often is actually kind of identity play. Um, uh, the, the term's particularly meaningful, if only for the fact that the whole approach we've taken with Holly Plus is meant to be kind of counter IP, right? And it's like IP right. generally people think of as intellectual property and this kind of like punitive measure. And we're like, okay, well, what if IP meant identity play? Like, what if the the what if the the natural extension of running toward the fire of all this kind of like wild new techlo- technology uh, uh, we have at our fingertips meant instead to kind of uh, uh, encourage people to to take an identity and run as far as they want with it within reason? Um, so, so that's kind of where we're where we're going at this point. Well, let's let's do a little without you know we can we can. Uh we can take a moment to, to uh, explore a little bit um, and just kind of react to what we're seeing. So can people, can people see me, maybe center on me, and then we can go on a little flying tour. Are these you guys? Wait, how do I fly again? I press F. Press space. F, and then you hold space. And it'll just like, uh, right, 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 right. Further and, further. and then you press F and you can fall. Okay, is everyone is everyone on me? Uh, yep. Not yet. I was confused for a minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to, you know, this is the virtual beings of virtual society. Somewhere we've got to mix things up. <laughs> I'm like, hey guys, where are you? Uh, oh, there you are. Okay, there. there we go. Okay. Okay, just a little. <laughs> It's a little slow. It looks, like, it looks like there are four of us up here, so I think that's probably all of us. If you start flying, then okay. Okay, so we're like a little flock of birds. It's very gentle. Um, we're going to try and fly in formation. So, can everyone see me? Yeah. Okay. Here I come. All right, all right. <laughs> So, go exploring. Tell me if anyone gets lost. Wow. And then we'll look around in a little gallery and get a sense of things. And then, yeah, I want to talk to you guys about how you how you think about uh, Holly in a virtual world. But before we do that, let's just get to, to where we're going. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stop off here when you're ready. So just uh, press F and you'll fall onto the ground. I'm really in this, you know. You, you're psychologically <laughs> getting caught in. I think yeah, the music totally. helps. So I seem to have managed to chosen the least appropriate and relevant. <laughs> Building. I mean, it looked good from the outside. I'm not sure how this is going to prompt prompt us in our discussions, but we can at least wander around and see if we can find any characters that we find exciting and interesting. Um, so, can you could you imagine somebody kind of powering Holly as a 3D avatar? Like, I'm sure you guys have been tracking all of the 3D avatar stuff. Like, how do you how do you sort of think about how that might that might uh, that might play out, like actually having Holly as a character that can be a visual that can be purchased. You've mentioned many people might be creating many different visuals. Could you see, um, could you see people like turning those into lots of different Holly avatars or maybe shares in Holly? Like, like how do you, how do you kind of think about that? Matt, do you want to answer that? Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time actually thinking of the opposite in a way of like Mm. trying to think of ways to bring some of the more immaterial aspects into space. Um, Mm. We actually have have a larger project that we're working on for next summer, uh, trying to think through those things, but absolutely. I mean, one of the, one of the cool opportunities, I think, particularly in thinking about generating many different visual representations of Holly plus one of the cool things we've been trying to think about is like, how we might be able to connect those thematically um, 
in order in order for them to be able to be represented in you know 3d kind of let's say immaterial space but mm -hmm. share common traits um mm -hmm. and one of the cool things about that in a way actually from the machine learning work we're doing is you know there are many actually <clears throat> publicly available machine learning libraries out there that kind of know who holly is like OpenAI's clip being one of them um mm -hmm. and what's kind of funny when you play with clip is that there is like a, a a stylistic like there's a style of holly like generally speaking the the common features of it are like red hair part of the reason we're incredibly jealous of your punk by the way <laughs> um, <laughs> but red hair blue eyes a braid um mm. generally like there's certain poses that clip is familiar with um uh, uh, holly for and so we've been we've definitely been recently exploring uh ways to bring those kind of coherent uh, 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 qualities to uh, uh, yeah to 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 identities that people might be able to use that are they're kind of you know uh, distinctive. Um, um, mm. Holly, <laughs> yeah, I mean, ideal ideally, it'll be open enough to where anyone who has an idea can can do whatever they want. You know, so mm. if somebody desires to do something with a three D. You know, maybe that's something that the DAO kind of votes on and we do like a body scan or something. I don't know. I want these to be kind of decisions that come from the community as well. So, so you know, going, going towards um, people actually fully splitting off Holly as a character. I, I don't know if you're, if you're, if you've been tracking Trevor with Michaela talking a little bit about decentralizing Michaela and kind of you know, allowing people to have more control over, over, yep. uh, over what she does. Um, do you sort of see, see that being a coherent second Holly that like, you know, people would, a large number of people would vote on like what she's doing or, or do you see it more as like thousands of Hollies that are being created? I think there will probably be thousands of Hollies, but I could yeah. see one of those thousands being one that maybe has like a, a more clearly defined community around. Um, so it could be, it could be like both. Sort of maybe compete <laughs> a little bit. Like one, one Holly would be the most famous. That's, it logically makes sense that like gradually one would like take, take uh, more resources and people would like get more and more excited about and that Holly would, uh, wow, we're getting very multiverse. <laughs> multiple yeah but the different oh, yeah. would each compete that's so cool i love that. yeah and that's one of, that's one of the goals in some ways right was like yeah. we we joked it's quite funny actually i hadn't even put this together before but you know the genesis of this project going back to like 2016 with spawn mm -hmm. um you know there is in like the is it the marvel or dc universe right like spawn is like kind of like the mm -hmm. evil spider-man um mm -hmm where like it's exactly the same character except spawn has this kind of dark uh evil yeah. kind of appearance um yeah. and one of the provocations at least in seeing this like as a project we want to push forward with is is really that prospect of like holly plus kind of turning into a character one that i mean already is completely out of our control right like mm. we have we have very little ownership share in the dao um mm. it's been set up to be decentralized from the beginning um and the the prospect of like real Holly having to contend with a with, you know, like a a, a rebellious twin, um, no, is look, part of, is part of the joy of it, right? <laughs> I don't want to spoil the ending of Loki for anyone who loves. <laughs> if anyone at the summit is you know has not yet watched the final episode of Loki, then you're going to have to close your ears. Do you guys do you guys care about Loki? Can I reveal a little bit of? I don't. I don't know what Loki is. Okay, thank I haven't God. seen so, it. Okay, good. It's highly relevant and very important, but uh, and you're going to spoil it. <laughs> I, mean, <basically. laughs> well, it's, I mean, look, it kicks off all of Phase Four and the multiverse in Marvel. I mean, I'm revealing myself as a little bit of a of a Marvel geek here, but um, <laughs> essentially, at the end uh, of season one of Loki, Kang reveals that he has been fighting thousands of versions of himself for mm. control of the universe. So I just love the idea of many Hollies, each with their own kind of, you know, little teams, like maybe even trying different genres and thinking about how performer like goes through those phases and which, you know, which is preferable. Usually we only have Madonna, you know, Madonna can only sequentially 
do phases. Now we would have have them simultaneously, I guess, with different styles. That's exactly, to work. That, that's exactly the point. And again, it goes back to that, like the, the difference between IP seen mm -hmm. in a punitive or restrictive way and identity play, which is mm -hmm. this, this idea fundamentally that like all of the things that people say they're afraid about with deep fakes, you can kind of you can kind of solve aspects of that by establishing provenance to a DAO and establishing com some kind of a, a voting structure to to determine official usage. But once you have those things in place, go to town, right? Like the yeah. idea of there being hundreds of competing hollies is kind of a dream. I mean, it, it's a really yeah. a, it, and 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 as I said, I think that the the spirit of this project really is that is a nightmare scenario for many people. But uh, great great gracefully or gr uh, i'm very grateful that holly herself sees that as kind of an exciting prospect you know it's like <laughs> well, i think i think you kind of touched on this already but it's it, it, it's almost a question of uh, how do i want to put this i don't even know if there's really a choice i am embracing it and i'm happy to do so but the cat's kind of already out of the bag i mean you know clip knows who i am you could create a, a voice model from from this conversation that we're having you know even from that little material so you know the ip cat is is kind of already escaped the bag and so for me i'm really interested in trying these experiments where artists can can kind of embrace this um this new paradigm of being able to let go of ip a little bit but still being able to have some sort of um, provenance or some sort of way to authorize, you know, specific use cases so that it's not entirely um, separated. So for mm. me, it's kind of a necessity and, and it's a welcome one. Mm. Well, I mean, when we think about, obviously, some people have moved from being um, themselves to belonging to all of us. So, you know, whether that's there being 15 people who've played, played President Nixon uh, and they each kind of exist in their own universe, uh, mm -hmm. of that character or of Jesus or all of that. Um, but it gets a little bit, it really, we're really just talking about like more accuracy to the voice, more accuracy to the image. A friend of mine, uh, was behind the, uh, the project around James Dean, bringing him back for a movie so that his character would be kind of within, uh, the film, um, but you can imagine actors. I mean, do you would you be excited to hear that? I don't know what. Like Cary Grant is in a new movie um, with speech modulation and with his face. Like how do how do you kind of think about the resurrection of of great artists? I mean, let's. I guess we can keep it to the twentieth century, so that it's more about the resurrection of a great singer or the resurrection of a great uh, actor. How do you how do you react to that? I think it's a little bit difficult because these people weren't able to opt in to this. Mm -hmm. I think moving forward, people can opt in. And that, you know, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to set up the DAO so that you mm -hmm. have a group of people that you trust to kind of steward the, the likeness moving forward, even post-mortem. Whereas mm -hmm. today it's kind of, you know, it, it will just be shepherded by the family members or whoever owns the, the rights to that, that person's likeness. And that might not be the person um, that 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 um, star would have chosen to kind of shepherd their likeness. So I think that there's a, a bit of a an ethical question. I'm not totally against it, but I think that the, it's a kind of a gray area there um, mm. because there there was no opt in kind of option. I don't know. What do there's you think? Also, that? Yeah, but there's also a dynamic there where I, I agree with everything you said there. I think that like it's it's really case by case, right? The the Anthony Bourdain issue came up, and that. And, and we're really kind of at this right. point, at least yes. right. one of one of the kind of lines in the Sam Weir drawing is that, you know, I think most people on a certain level at this point are already kind of aware of, that this is coming. You know, they're, they're already being asked to sign contracts to, you know, license their facial coordinates for advertisements and stuff like this, right? Like, so, oh. so that's coming, coming really quickly. I think, I think the other thing that's really important is like, you know, one concern I have, you know, I remember it's i'll say it um yeah this is it's public information but like we initially actually got involved with um with making uh voice models partly for a pitch that we made as part of the greater kind of production campaign around the blade runner reboot um really and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Spawn, well spawn it's funny when you said scientists who are like injecting themselves our conception at the time was like 
you know, there was some chatter about being able to make like short films that will be part of the promotion campaign. And so we were pitching something and the idea was that, you know, the original researchers that came up with these uh, sentient kind of uh, uh, sentient intelligences had a disagreement. They were a married couple and, you know, the man uh, decided to kind of enslave them and make this great company. And in our story, we basically wanted to fork the narrative and make this kind of fan fiction where the woman disagreed with this and decided to take uh, the child spawn to a different planet um, and start a civilization in which these intelligences were were free to to, to explore mm. themselves. Um, mm. Now, what's funny about that? <clears throat> but eventually, we couldn't do it because they basically wrote back and were like, "You cannot touch like the, the IP. Yeah, yeah, you can't touch the lore." And we're like, "Okay, cool." But um, so we're like, "Okay, well, we'll just make Spawn ourselves." Um, but the but what was funny about that film, which is at least one of my worries, is you know, there's the scene where like I think it's Sinatra is kind of reanimated, you know, right. yeah, and it's done a bit tongue in cheek, but at the same time, when you watch the film, you're like, okay, well, this is IP that's owned by I forget the company that was also funding the reboot, and there is this concern. Oh, that I just made this that kind connection. Of yeah, absolutely. The, the IP of uh, Sinatra's IP is, is owned by the same company. And so it's kind of like done tongue in cheek, but at the same time, there is something slightly dystopian to this idea of like forever uh, living I mean, in, in the shadow of the 20th century, you know, like, um, mm. but on the flip side, the, that's the one thing I'm really encouraged by, at least with the crypto sphere is that there isn't really, if anything, like when people try and jump into crypto, and they're mm. flexing their 20th century entertainment muscle, it's treated with skepticism, you know? So like, I'm, I'm like way more interested in the punks than Cary Grant, even though I love Cary Grant and Hitchcock and, you know what I mean? But, but, but it's like, but that's the big fear is it's like, okay, well, will we forever be, you know, there will be a corner of culture that like is forever like hard rock cafe or something where it's forever like kind of repurposing the, the subcultural spirits of 20th century things that, that, are a shell of themselves you know and so sort of mad nostalgia yeah yeah exactly and there's nothing necessarily wrong with it i think there's also interesting no, things that the level of nostalgia it. is crazy yeah. i mean allowing yeah. millennials to return to being 10 years old does seem to be a, su a sub theme of a lot of uh, a lot of nft success um i guess i'm curious what about what about like biopics or like you know how or a great singer from you know beginning of the century or I guess an artist like Joaquin Phoenix and in Johnny Cash maybe actually looks and sounds exactly like Johnny Cash and has mm -hmm. fully has fully kind of transformed into that maybe when an artist is involved and not a corporation that takes on maybe something more using using deep fake as a medium for art which is why I'm so in love with what you guys are doing you are literally using one of the few using me deep fake as a medium for artistic expression. Thank you. I mean, Thank I think you, yeah. with, with the kind of Joaquin Phoenix example, one of the things that makes that performance so powerful is that we know him as someone alive today. And so he embodies yeah. a lot of the kind of, you know, uh, aesthetics and tropes of what we understand of a movie star today. And then he's kind yeah. of playing this role. And that's the kind of magic there. That's a little mm. bit different than if it was just kind of a reanimated um, Johnny Cash. Although I would also watch a reanimated Johnny Cash because <laughs> I'm a huge <laughs> Johnny Cash fan. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think you hit the nail on the head is that this kind of, you know, deep fake to me, it still has a pejorative term. That's why I keep using this identity play uh, thing. Mm. Um, but the, you know, it is a new medium for expression. And one can imagine as with any medium of expression, you know, lazy uses, kind of like cheap uses. Um, mm. And if anything, we're kind of here and no doubt you are amongst the few also um, kind of here to advocate for this new medium of, of expression as one of like wild creative possibility um, that, mm. yeah. So, so, you know, if, if anything, like it all depends on the individual use case and the kind of deployment of the techniques and like how imaginative those ideas are. Um, and we're here, we're here very much kind of endorsing, endorsing this, this kind of play as a, as new and uh, yeah, wildly, wildly exciting. Um, but there's going to be a lot of bad art, <laughs> but there always is, you know? <laughs> well, speak, let's just, uh, you know, there are a couple um questions from the audience that i wanted to go over so let's step outside and we can we can kind of be be uh be out in the 
in the world look under the sky um i guess one, one is um around on the personal side like so it's would you ever um create an ai of a friend um and i guess i would i would add to that of a family member Did I lose um, guys? I mean, Matt would say yes because he's done that. <laughs> right, Matt has in fact done. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would probably say yes too because I, you know, we created a kind of virtual child. Um, yeah. It wasn't based on an existing child, but yeah, I mean, it, for me, it's all about consent. So if I had a family member who was really interested in this and that made sense for our practice, yeah, certainly I would consider it. Yeah, I mean, the. I also think it's it's kind of a fun thing to do. I think with friends and family members, that's maybe the, the core circle of people who, as one like user group or whatever, is kind of like the one that would be the most conscious of consent. You know, like yesterday, we, we actually came to the conclusion that yesterday I may have been the first ever AI karaoke singer. Um, I'm going to timestamp that because <laughs> wow. we've been, we figured out, you know, a way for me to, to sing um in real time as holly um and we were a being it by like oh you did That's so yeah yeah cool. no it, and it sounds cr cr crazy uh but like yeah it sounds mm. like me with an english accent it's so wild yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the um but the cool thing was you know we were a being it like holly loaded up a set from her show and so i was going through her like usual vocal processing that would happen like in a show and we're, we're like mm. a being the two things and i'm like this is the kind of thing that actually you can do with the safety and comfort of people who you love and and are friendly with so so if anything i think yeah uh uh friends playing with each other's identities seems to me like a really promising um area and 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 kind of appropriately conscious of like yeah consent well not not to not to become too freudian but it, i mean i'm just wondering about if each man becomes his father and each woman becomes his mother i mean if we are literally <laughs> able to to become or live through our parents a little bit and speak as our our parents or as our in your case your your yeah I mean, that's it is the the possibilities of of disturbing and disorienting how things are done today is is it's just huge um yeah. yeah. Another <laughs> another question from uh, from the audience uh, is about um, just the different styles. Like, are there any styles uh, that you wouldn't want uh, Holly Plus used for, or any kind of you know anything that you don't want Holly Plus to be doing? Maybe with her spoken voice as opposed to uh, musical voice. And we can kind of, I guess, as a caveat, we can leave out the super obvious stuff that we wouldn't want happening. Just more like things that uh things that you feel may artistically not be the right stuff or do you want to keep it completely open yeah i mean i think just to touch on the kind of obvious stuff the like you know hate speech kind of mm -hmm. you know that kind of universe when we make these tools available to everyone we can't control whether or not that happens um and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have the dao as a kind of place of authentication where people could see which works the dao was really excited about really approves and um you know that's kind of part of a, an official collection so that people can understand the difference between things that the dao is excited about and things that are just kind of out in the wild because we won't be able to control um, all of those things. And so that's kind of our way to be able to have a little bit of curated quality control while allowing people to play around. And honestly, it's just, it's, it's too big of a, um, uh, of a, of a challenge to try to kind of police all of the uses online. So uh, official uses, seal, seals of approvals kind of was mm -hmm. our um, answer to that. Yeah. And the other thing I would say on styles is that, you know, I'm in my 30s now and I've noticed we actually live really close to a, a school, like a college where art students go. And it's crazy because like I'm like walking past kids who look like they're into like pop punk, like wearing etnies, like stuff that like I, I remember wearing when I was like 13 or 14. Um, and so I think that like capping styles really shouldn't be the objective because things that we may be, you know, uh, grew up not taking seriously or or grew up with certain associations around are always being repurposed by different people like younger people or people in different environments and so yeah it, it would feel kind of self-defeating or kind of 
it, it kind of forecloses like interesting conversations, I think, to to be too snobby about stuff always. Um mm -hmm. with the without with the exception of the obvious caveats, right? Of people just doing awful things. Um but yeah, but it's it'll be kind of fun, I think, to uh yeah. It'll be it'll be fun it'll be fun to be aesthetically challenged by uh by things that come from this experiment. Which has already happened, honestly. Like some of the some of the first submissions to the Holly Plus uh to the Holly Plus auction, there's some things in there for sure that like- Oh yeah, I'd love to hear. So yeah, how did great. the auction, what did people submit at the auction? Like whether you can say like what, tell us a little bit about that. And then I have one more question from the audience. It's oh yeah, just huge, quickly, go, go. Yeah, go. It's, a, it's a huge range. I mean, we have everything mm -hmm. from like fully composed songs to pieces of sound mm -hmm. art to, mm -hmm. it's actually, that. that's what I love about it is that what people mm -hmm. submitted is just like not at all what I would have come up with myself. And that's kind of the mm -hmm. whole point. Yeah, my favorite, there's there's a, a young woman who, it's literally like her playing this beautiful folk song with an acoustic guitar and Holly is, Holly Plus is used to, to harmonize with. And it, it's something that I would never have associated with, you know, the generally kind of like, the general aesthetic of stuff that we do, but hearing it, I, it completely floored me. Honestly, I'm like, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> so there's 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 a bunch of beautiful beautiful uh, uh, work in there, and the whole point is, yeah, there's no no real restrictions. Well, the last question from the audience is pretty short, which is, can I be Holly? Uh, and I guess, <laughs> yeah, how how can how can people get involved and be Holly? And and then I have a kind of follow up to that, but yeah, how can people get involved? Well, the easiest way to get involved right now is to go to holly.plus and you can upload any file, any uh, MP3, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, it can be polyphonic, it can be, you know, whatever. And that will be trans translated into a kind of version of the Holly process voice. So that's, mm -hmm. what, that's the tool that we have available right now. We also, um, there was a party bid on a speaking voice that we um, right, launched. Right, I think I thought of that. Exactly. Yeah. So that if, you. if you, uh, you can, that's actually available to everyone. So if you want to kind of play around with my voice a little bit like that. Um, and so that's, what's available at the moment, but we have a lot of, um, new tools kind of up our sleeve that we will be, um, sharing soon. And we will also be sharing the auction from the first season of the Holly plus submissions. And so, you know, I'm not allowed to say to make any promises, but if you are a successful bidder on one of those pieces, you might find yourself uh, in the Dow, but uh, no promises. <laughs> yeah, you, you might potentially. Uh, yeah, but I think that Holly nailed most of it. Like we've been, what we're doing really at the moment is there's going to be plenty of opportunities to get involved. We're actually the second release. We're being a bit slower on. Uh, mm. The reason being is that it's now so good. Like the voice model that we're working with, which we haven't released, nobody's seen this yet, um, is now so good that a lot of the stuff that Holly's been discussing around having to figure out some really particular legal stuff around what the DAO owns and like how people use it is really urgent actually. Um, so, so yeah, but there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a bunch of opportunities for people to get involved and then, and the best place to be honestly will be, will be as a member of the DAO and, and mm -hmm. we're very much approaching a uh, DAO membership as one, as one of like, you know, er earned, earned by participation as opposed to, you know, selling tokens or something like that. That's not really the approach we're taking. Um, but yeah, everybody, everybody should be free uh, to be Holly. And mm. trust me in the next like couple of months that that statement is going to get really real, <laughs> like really, really real, <laughs> um, which is exciting. <laughs> can, can you see, can you see people like actually kind of, you know, being able to use um, Holly Plus's position, maybe they're very shy. They've never like been able to to kind of perform in front of a group or something like that. But actually, through Holly, they're able to to kind of be be born as a star or something. So, I mean, I think that some of the tools that we have coming out uh, this year mm -hmm. will enable some of that. Um, yeah, but so also, you know, I think people should feel free to make Holly kind of whatever is their kind of own hybrid version of Holly, whether that be a star or whether that mm. also be a really shy Holly. I want to see different versions of Holly. 
Yeah, but right. that's that touches on something really important, I think, on on the whole identity play thesis is mm. you know, the the latest thing that we've been working with related to kind of singing in a very realistic style in in Holly's voice. Um, you know, we played it to a friend of ours who is not a musician, um, uh, just to kind of gauge her feeling. And it, what she said to me was actually um, very, very congruent with what uh, you just said. She was like, wow, you know, I've always kind of wanted to sing and this seems like it would be a way to- um, That's how to I feel. Yeah, That's yeah. actually how I feel. I'm like, I, yeah. I can't sing and I can't imagine myself, you know, doing any, something like that in front of a, a crowd maybe i'd be tapping my foot very nervously or something yeah, yeah. but the idea <laughs> of actually having that experience that's an incredible strange days if you remember that movie kind of mm -hmm, like living yeah. with somebody else like i think there's something very powerful to that um i love totally. that. It, it is and it's a responsibility but it's a great opportunity too right and like Mm. And I mean, in music, there's been a great legacy of this, right? Like auto-tune is a classic example of like yeah, yeah. a tool that has enabled a great many people who maybe aren't the most confident about their voices to express themselves. Um, and that stuff's yeah. going to, it's, it's going to get, it's going to get crazy. And um, yeah, what, what you just, what you just articulated is an experience we've, we've seen with a lot of people. And I think providing tools for people to, to enjoy those moments or whatever is like, could be really fun i mean above all else is just like really fun <laughs> it could be a stage of everyone's career as they kind of you know get started in the music industry they 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 be holly for for a few months of their career just to and isn't that just the way i mean we learn we learn through imitation so why not yeah. learn through 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 kind of like uh impersonation or puppetry or whatever you know it's like oh, i love it it's my so first my first band sounded like uh you know, all of our first bands sounded very derivative of somebody else. Um. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time. I, uh, I am going to, um, you know, look, look down. Now. Oh, look, see you guys are falling. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess we'll say goodbye to each other in the clouds. Um, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks for virtual beings. It's Happy to fun. be a part of this. This was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah I love Super fun. fun. I love flying. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, can we just stay? Can we just stay here and not work the rest of the day? <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.